The beauty of the central limit theorem is its application in real world problems. The power of CLT lies in the fact that there is no need to know the population distribution for applying CLT. We generally use the central limit theorem as an approximation when we study a population that is very big and it takes a hefty amount of time to gather data about each individual that's part of it. One useful real-time application of CLT is found in election polls where the confidence intervals are demonstrated and the percentage of persons supporting a candidate are shown in news channels. Other real-time applications of CLT are in various census fields for calculating population details such as electricity consumption, family income, etc. So without further ado, let's get started right away. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new update or video releases from Great Learning. If you enjoy this video, show us some love and like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing, so make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues. Make sure to comment on the video for any query or suggestions and I will respond to your comments. Now, very quickly, let me walk you to the agenda for today's course. In today's course, we're going to learn about the basic understanding of central limit theorem, demonstration of CLT using Python and importance of CLT. Central limit theorem. Sampling distribution of the mean of any independent random variable will be normal. Independent random variable could be any metric that we calculated. Flavor of a fruit juice or likability of a new phone launched into the market or uh, likability of a software product that is launched into the market. You can talk about anything or usability of the software product. You can take anything. It's an independent random variable. Why we call it an independent random variable? Everyone, everywhere, there are no restrictions on that one. Everyone has an opportunity to rate that product equally or provide opinion on that product equally and the values are random. We understood random, what random means last time. There is an equally likely opportunity for everyone in your population to respond on to that particular one. That's what a random means. You throw a dice from one to six, there's an equal opportunity to come up for any value on that one. You launch a product for a certain population. Anyone in your population has opportunity equally to give their opinion on that product. That's what a random variable means. So that distribution of the mean of that sampling distribution will be normal. And as I said, whether your sampling distribution uh, is normal or not, we don't know. But the distribution of the mean definitely will be normal. That's what central limit theorem says. And this applies to both discrete and continuous distributions. You know what is discrete, what is continuous, right? So the random variable should have a well-defined mean and variance. Variance essentially means standard deviation. So square root of variance is nothing but standard deviation. That's why we call well-defined mean and variance. That's the matrix that we capture. It's self-understood, self-explanatory. Then applicable even when the original variable is not normally distributed. Is it the point that we covered already? So even if the original variable is not normally distributed, the mean of uh, the me distribution of the means of uh, that population will be normally distributed. So let's look at this uh, central limit theorem. So are you able to see the Python file? Actually, this is a HTML file. I have this in Python also, which I ran, tested everything. Uh, but uh, I'll use the Python file just that is that that is given this one both are exactly the same so basically what we are trying to do is uh, importing pandas simple straight away then there is a file called uh, insurance data file uh, you'll get access to these files once the session gets over then other file called Boston it's a city prices and everything taxes different features then there is a another file called titanic each of these files have one variable each variable or multiple variables i didn't even check the files but there is a variable called charges in insurance and there is a variable called tax in boston and there is a variable called fare in titanic we are interested in only these specific variables in each of those data sets uh, we could have taken any data so we randomly picked three files and created uh, three series for each of these things. From insurance, the charges is being converted into a series data. From Boston, taxes is taken and another series is created. From Titanic, uh, fare is taken and a series is created. Are we clear till this point? So now we created three different series. These are completely three different variables we created, three series at the end of the day. And now we are creating a function called central limit theorem. This is a user defined function. All the while, all this while, when you use any of these functions like title, x label, 
or data frame. These are all the functions that we use. These are the system functions. These are called library system libraries. Uh, the user li the libraries that got created uh, come with the uh, pandas libraries and everyone. But this function is a user defined function. We are defining a function to demonstrate central limit theorem. And what does this function takes? You understand the concept of functions, all of you? So yes. now this, fu this function, the syntax is essentially you define def in the beginning, define and then it becomes a function and all the things follow syntactically like this. And the function name is Central Theorem. So what are the arguments it takes? It takes a data, which essentially is a series. Data is equal to one dimensional array or a PD dot series. So we create, that's why we created all the series at the top. Then we are defining n samples. This is the sample size, essentially number of samples to be created from this data set that is there. So we are saying that create thousand samples. Then size of the each sample that we are taking is 500. So each sample will have 500 values. The minimum value should be zero. Maximum value should be 1338. This is primarily taking into account all the values in different variables that are there. That's how those values are chosen. So don't pay too much concern about that just some values based on your business context you can define those values whichever way you want that minimum value is the minimum index of the data maximum index of the data so it's not the actual value the index so many rows it is limiting with that particular one then matplotlib inline you already know what matplotlib does uh, pandas numpy matplotlib plt so then seaborn as sns so those are the libraries we are importing then we are writing a looping function. So B, what is this? What are we creating here? There is one more data type. What are the different data types that we see? It's a dictionary. And what is the importance of dictionary here? Why you are creating a dictionary? Why we are creating, we'll, we'll look at that. But what, what does the dictionary has, right? So now we created an empty dictionary right now. So what we are doing is for i in range of n samples, what does range of n samples give? The default n samples value, how much we took here? Thousand. When you actually invoke this function, you can pass any value. That's a different problem. Whatever the value that comes to it, if nobody passes a value, why do we declare here like is equal to thousand? What is the significance of this? If the user doesn't pass a value for n samples, it by default takes thousand. That's why we initial declaration. This is a default declaration value. If user defines a value or passes an argument, it takes that value. If not, it takes thousand. That's the purpose of giving a value at the frame of defining the function. Okay. So now for, if we like to, for example, take thousand. So for I in range of thousand, what is range of thousand means? The value ranges from, it creates a list and the list ranges from zero to 999, zero to 999. It has thousand values, but it doesn't take thousand. So for each of those values, zero to 999, it starts creating this particular thing. Now let's see what it is doing. Basically, to simply put it, it creates a random numbers of specific size, but it is invoking NumPy array. First, let's come from inside to outside. That makes our life easy. So in NP library, or the NumPy library, we have a module called random. What does random do? It's, it's a, it creates random values of your specific choice. And we are using a function called randint. What does randint does? Random integers, correct. So we define this random integer from a minimum value, there is a maximum value and create these many values, the size. If I say this, if I say let's say for example, randint of zero comma 10, five, it creates five values between zero and 10. That's what randint does. This whole thing creates a list of five values with value between zero and one. So here it creates a list of this size, sample size size, whose values uh, range between minimum value and maximum value. This minimum value, maximum value are nothing but what you passed here. And the size is nothing but the sample size you passed here. Getting this? Yeah. That's what random int does. But when you do this, because it is a random integer, you create uh, let's say 100 values between 0 and uh, 1000. There is a very possibility, a very likelihood that it will create duplicate values, right? Because it is a random number, it can throw the same number again. And in the list, we don't want the duplication. We want to eliminate all duplicates and have only the unique values. That's why this np.unique function is used. So now this np.unique eliminates all the duplicate values from that list that got created by randint, this thing, and 
those unique values as a list is assigned to x the maximum value it can take is 500 in this scenario we are calculating so this what is this x now x is a list but what does x have what did we say these values is the index so we are saying b we created as a dictionary b of i is equal to data of x what is this data nothing but the series that we are passing here right for that series for these many values let's say for example the series that i am passing for example is series one so let's go down and we'll see i'll show you how we invoke that so i'm invoking central limit theorem series three n samples equal to 5000 sample size equal to 500 when i invoke this particular example what is this taking now my data here is series three and now i create a pandas data frame using this dictionary it's easy to create a pandas data frame through dictionary because you have a key you have a value key is nothing but your label and value is nothing but the content in that particular variable so c i'm creating c is equal to pandas data frame now c of sample is equal to b of keys what is it b of keys essentially all the i values that got stored and now c is the mean all values of this particular one the means that we calculated are going into data frame so data frame has two columns now one is the sample the other one is the mean so first sample what is the mean second sample what is the mean third sample what is the mean it just calculates that creates that pandas data frame are we good with this thing? so this is randomly how we create a data for our uh, statistics testing purposes so the rest is pretty straightforward essentially so once you create that now you're creating a this charts this figure you create this particular one then i am creating two charts one chart is for sampling distribution the other chart is for the population distribution for me the sample distribution essentially is nothing but all the samples that i got the distribution of these samples and its means and for population for the whole population i take the data itself the data that i pass as an argument which is the whole series those metrics are being taken here so data is an argument that is being passed so oh, the same data we are using here okay, okay. okay so so now this is all about if i go back to the ppt that we have it is proving this line this is what central limit theorem critical critically important for us sampling distribution of the mean of any independent random variable will be normal though you know, the original variable is not normally distributed just to prove this we are doing this exercise so this is the sampling distribution of the means that we calculated the first one is about the means we are doing right the mean value so the mean is normally distributed this is how a normal distribution looks like whereas your population distribution is actually not normal so is it which, which side skew left skew right skew right skewed exactly and now if you look at another example so we took three examples right three data sets again the mean is normally distributed and your population is bimodal essentially and you take this one this is very very right skewed distribution very thin distribution happening despite all that you see your mean distribution is normally distributed is this making sense folks what central limit theorem actually means this is a demonstration of central limit theorem primarily so that's primarily is the central limit theorem first i would suggest go back watch the video again practice this file change your own values like i created this test values how the np random works and everything here also make your own changes start looking at the thing then you will start absorbing what actually this code is all about what it is telling and then read a little bit about central limit theorem you'll understand the things far far better so that's primarily about sampling distributions and central limit theorem now why central limit theorem is so important for us because most of the times we operate with the sample statistics and population parameters and as we said the sampling distribution of the statistic generally tends to be normal subject to the condition of your have a decent sufficient sample size it tends to become a normal if the sample size is not sufficient enough then this might not hold true we'll see the uh, scenarios of that one but otherwise it tends to be normal once it becomes normal you have to understand how your data distribution is looking like once you get a hold of your distribution then you start identifying uh, or validating your hypothesis you build your hypothesis on that particular one and then you validate your hypothesis and do 
inferential statistics or analytics around that one, which is basically your hypothesis. Now, very quickly, let's summarize today's video. In today's video, we discussed the definition of CLT understood its advantage. We understood that the mean of any independent random variable remains normal, even though the original variable is not normally distributed. This is applicable for both discrete and continuous data. We did analyze using a data set, insurance data, Boston and Titanic, and demonstrated the CLT concept. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new update or video releases from Great Learning. If you enjoyed this video, show us some love and like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing, so make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues. Make sure to comment on the video for any query or suggestions and I will respond to your comments.